What if I told you that a technological coup, one big enough to upend the entire global tech order, is happening in plain sight, and almost everyone is being kept in the dark? And what if I told you that the recent news, the seemingly boring headlines about China's chip imports falling in both volume and value, isn't some minor market fluctuation, but the eerie calm on the ocean's surface just before a massive hurricane makes landfall? For months, Wall Street analysts and Washington think tanks have been scratching their heads. Why did China suddenly stop its chip buying spree? Is the economy failing? Is demand shrinking? Wrong, all wrong. We might all be caught in a mental trap. We're always using the old playbook of catching up and replacement to interpret China's moves. But what if this time, they have no intention of playing that game at all? What if their plan is to build an entirely new arena, outside the one we're all familiar with, and then simply declare our rules null and void? Today, we are going deep, we're digging into the earth-shattering plan that's been buried under mountains of data and noise. This isn't just about a few hundred billion dollars in a trade deficit. This is about the global power map for the next decade. It's about your job, your investments, and the very foundation of the technological world as we know it. Are you ready? Let's get into it. Let's go back to that core data point. Over the past year, China's chip imports have dropped in both volume and value. While the total sum is still astronomical, this decline means hundreds of billions of dollars in demand have simply evaporated from the global market. But here's the most interesting part. When you put another set of data next to it, a startling picture emerges. While imports of finished chips were falling, China's imports of chip-making equipment repeatedly smashed historical records, at one point surging past $40 billion. On one hand, they're buying fewer finished products. On the other, they're buying more of the machines that make the products. What does this tell you? It shows a complete strategic shift from buying the fish to weaving their own nets to catch the fish. For decades, we got used to a single model. China, the world's factory, was the planet's largest buyer of chips. It was like a ravenous engine, relentlessly consuming cutting-edge chips from the West, South Korea, and Taiwan, spending over $400 billion a year. That's more than it spends on oil. This fueled China's tech rise, and it also fed the entire global semiconductor industry. But now, that engine has suddenly hit the brakes. The mainstream explanation points to the pressure from U.S. sanctions, coupled with a slowing Chinese economy. This explanation misses the most crucial point. This is not a passive retreat. It is a premeditated, proactive assault. To understand this grand chess game, you have to realize that behind China's chip strategy, there's a plan B that we rarely talk about. For years, under the banner of Made in China 2025, state capital has been flooding the sector on an unprecedented scale. The National Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund, known as the Big Fund 3, alone raised over 340 billion renminbi. This massive war chest has one target, to smash through the critical chokehold sectors. In the last few years, more than 20,000 new chip-related companies have been registered in China. This insane factory building and investment blitz has been paving the way for the ultimate plan we're about to discuss. And there's an even more secretive move, strategic stockpiling. Just as a nation builds up strategic oil reserves before a war, there is substantial analysis showing that China has spent the last few years using its massive market power to quietly and systematically hoard chips far beyond its immediate needs. They built a strategic chip reserve, a giant cushion sufficient to withstand several years of external shocks and sanctions. So, is it clicking into place? This drop in imports probably isn't because they need fewer chips, but because their stockpiles are now full. Now, the real transformation begins. Chinese chip makers like SMIC and YMTC are no longer just cheap alternatives. In specific areas like specialized AI chips and advanced packaging, they are starting to show astonishing competitiveness. The entire conversation is shifting. It's no longer. When will China catch up? It's becoming. Are they already far further ahead than we ever imagined? A China that no longer relies on Western chips means that the biggest card in America's hand, technological sanctions, is rapidly losing its power. It means the leverage point of the global supply chain is shifting, irreversibly. But that's not even the scariest part. All of this is just the defensive chapter of their grand plan. What comes next is the real offensive. If everything up to this point was about staying alive, the next phase is about winning the future. 
China's chip strategy was never a simple copy-paste. It's a three-pronged, three-dimensional war. The first prong is physical expansion, the factory-building frenzy we all know about. The second is the global headhunt, and this is a much more secretive front. Over the past few years, a talent migration of unprecedented scale has been underway. Senior engineers, even former executives from TSMC, Samsung, Intel, and ASML have been quietly joining Chinese semiconductor firms, bringing with them decades of experience and core technical know-how. The offers China makes are impossible to refuse. World-class labs, nearly infinite resources, and a mission to create something different. And this leads us to the third prong, the most disruptive of all. Stop chasing and change the entire racetrack. Friends, this is the bombshell. China's real ambition is not to catch up to Intel on the old road of silicon-based chips. It's to make that entire road obsolete. Inside those heavily guarded national labs we never see, China is pouring astronomical sums of money into next-generation semiconductors. We're not talking about an upgraded version of a traditional chip. We are talking about entirely new species. Photonic chips that use light instead of electricity for transmission. Quantum processors that leverage quantum superposition for computation. Even bio-integrated circuits that blur the lines between biology and computing. This stuff, which sounds like it's straight out of a sci-fi movie, already exists in working prototypes in China. They are making a gigantic bet on the future. That while the rest of the world is bleeding itself dry fighting tooth and nail over 3 nanometer and 2 nanometer silicon, they will airdrop a completely new species of computing onto the battlefield and declare, your rules are obsolete. This is not a fantasy. Information from within the supply chain and industry intelligence points to a more aggressive, you could even say an insane timeline. China plans to push some of these new technologies to market within the next 12 to 18 months. Not in 10 years, not in some distant future, but right now. That timeline is breathtakingly fast. The goal isn't to compete, it's to clear the board. To use a brand new technology, with standards it defines, patents it owns, and an ecosystem it builds. To make traditional semiconductor technology, along with the entire Silicon Valley dynasty built upon it, obsolete. This is cutting the legs out from under the entire industry. If this truly happens, the global balance of power will be rewritten in an instant. For the West's semiconductor giants, it would be a repeat of the Nokia moment, an existential crisis. Their stock prices, their R&D roadmaps, their market positions would be utterly upended. For geopolitics, the world would no longer revolve around TSMC, Intel, or ASML. The center of power would shift, decisively, to the east we would likely witness the descent of a technological iron curtain. The world would be split into two incompatible tech universes, one led by China, based on a new generation of computing technology, the other led by the West, based on the legacy silicon ecosystem. Nations would be forced to choose a side. The golden age of global technological integration could come to an end. So what we are witnessing is far more than a change in trade data. It's a signal, a warning, and a trailer for how the second half of the 21st century is going to be run. The real story isn't that China is buying fewer chips. It's that they are in the process of redefining the word chip itself. Now, I want to throw the question to all of you. First, in your industry, have you already started to feel the chill of this decoupling or supply chain shift? Second, what do you think is the West's best response? Should it double down on sanctions, trying to slow China's progress at all costs? Or should it set aside old biases and seek cooperation in certain areas to avoid a fragmented, more unstable world? And third, in this new tech cold war that has already begun, who do you think will have the last laugh? Leave your insights in the comments below. If you found this analysis valuable, please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and share this video with anyone you know who cares about the future. I'll see you in the next one.